Hi guys. Um, so this is day seven actually. So this is a week into my 100 days of self growth. And today I want to talk about, um, I guess just being able to feel your feelings and feel your sadness and that truly feeling your feelings and feeling your sadness is the over I watched a video of Kyle Cease's today. I put the link in the description. Um, because I'm I'm mourning the loss of a very important relationship, and I don't want to deal with the pain. Of course, um, moving on from. A family member who you just don't get along with, who you know you have a toxic relationship with, um, a partner, even a job, even a, moving on from a job and coworkers and people that you love and care about, all of those things can really hurt and cause a lot of pain and and sadness and separation anxiety and. I think it's okay to distract yourself from it if, if the feelings are too intense, but I think that ultimately you have to deal with them eventually. Um, I think be, I think shelving it for a second is okay. I think, you know, saying, fuck it, I'm going to go out, you know, like if you break up with someone, fuck it, I'm going to go out tonight and go dance with my girls and just have a good time and enjoy myself and not think about the stress of break a breakup or, you know, the stress of whatever I'm feeling right now, I think that's okay, but I think later on you need to take that feeling back down from the shelf and really just feel it and sit in it and let it feel heavy and let it suck and let it feel, let the pain, let yourself feel the pain because if you just push the pain down, push it, push it, push it, push it, push it so far down, eventually it'll come out, but it'll come out in anger. It'll come out in bad communication skills. It'll come out in, you know, something in your future relationship will trigger something that you pushed away, the pain that you pushed away from the previous one. It'll all come out. But if you just allow yourself to deal with the pain then and there, it's you, you, you release it entirely. entirely. You know, for so long, like, for a, there was a period in my life where I didn't cry. Um, I didn't cry at all. I remember I met my ex when I was 18 years old, and I told him that I never cried. And for the first couple, like, first year or so of our relationship, I didn't really cry. And he just thought it was so odd. Like, I was just so emotionless. And it's because I learned, you know, that feelings are bad, crying makes you weak, um, you know, it's not okay to cry, and in society too, we, oh, don't cry, you know, even our doctors will be like, oh, don't cry, here's this medication, crying is not good, we need to be happy all the time, and that just comes out of super fake, I hate the people who are like, you know, I'm always happy, like, bullshit, sometimes we just need to fucking cry, you know, sometimes I come home and I'm like, god damn it, I need to cry, right now and I don't know why sometimes sometimes I have no idea but I just feel it and I need to and that's okay and I'm so sick you know of everyone being like eh, crying makes you pathetic and crying you know whatever like I don't even care like I'm gonna feel my emotions 100% not all the time because I can't let it interfere with my daily life but I'm gonna say you know what this feeling of fear or this feeling of sorrow or this feeling of sadness is here right now. If I'm out somewhere and I can't deal with it in that moment, fine, I'll take it home with me. I'll say, okay, I'm putting it in my back pocket. When I get home, I'm going to take that out and unfold it and figure out what exactly that pain and that fear and that sorrow is about. And then you can sit with it yourself. You know, don't go chugging down a bunch of beers. Maybe the first night, fine, as long as you come back to it later. Because otherwise you're just going to go on this continuous cycle of repression, repression, repression. 
and repressed people, if you haven't noticed, are the fakest people. The fakest people and the most angry. Because they're super fake all the time, pretending that they're happy. So when they actually decide to tap into that little space in them where their their emotions are just brewing like in a witch's pot, they explode. Like they cannot they have no even they can't even just articulate what they're feeling because they never have. They've never sat with it. They've never experienced it. They've never said, "Man, I'm feeling really upset right now." Maybe that's because this person said this to me and that was hurtful because I have insecurities about this or everything that we take of offense or something that hurts us from our outside environment is from something going on with us. If someone tells me I'm, I look tired without makeup and I get super offended, it's because I'm feeling bad about the way that I look. So being able to, you know, take this emotion and say, where is this emotion coming from? You know, really like laying it on us thickly and saying, okay, this is where it's coming from. Wow, even just being able to acknowledge it will release so much of it, you know, that the next time it comes up, you can say, oh yeah, I'm feeling that right now because when I was a kid, a lot of people called me ugly or whatever the case may be. And you can you can reflect in that way so that your emotions just don't get shoved away and then eventually they come crashing down on you or you're so incapable of handling emotion that you just never do and it leaves you hollow and empty. You know, I just... I just hope that as, you know, a community in general, we can all be allowed to feel our feelings more and not look at them as this horrible taboo thing like I've come to the conclusion too women are not crazy they're just more emotional and they show it more most of them men are told that they cannot cry they cannot show emotion at a very young age a lot of them not everybody obviously so when they see a woman expressing emotions it's so overwhelming and overbearing to them because they're not used to it so if we start cultivating that space in ourselves where it's okay, where we, you know, allow ourselves to have these emotions and to express them, when another person expresses an emotion, you can think logically, this, you know, maybe this is what they're going through in life. You know, maybe I'll give them a little pass. Maybe I'll tell them, like, excuse me. Either, like, if they're being rude to you, you don't have to be rude to me right now. You know, you're allowed to tell them that. But you, as a person, can know hmm, it's probably coming from a place, you know, of anger. We are so disconnected with our emotions that we cannot rationalize other people's emotions. And if we start tapping into our own, we can then help. Oh, well, I think a lot of you know the issues that we have with people online, like all the trolling and all the people just bashing each other, being fucking horrible to each other, is because they have no sense of who they are and they have no sense of like their own struggles most people not everybody i'm not generalizing here but they have no you know they don't tap into themselves so this is a little rant about tapping into your emotions i'm sorry if i got upset but i'm upset because i feel bad it makes me sad and it makes me a little angry that we're told not to connect to something that's so central to who we are. And I think that if we did it more, we would just be a more transformed, evolved people. So that's my rant for today. Feel your feelings. Yes, they effing suck a lot. I know, trust me. I am one of the most emotional people on the planet. But the only way to get through your feelings, the only way to get through the sadness and bring yourself to a happy place, a truly happy place, not just a, yeah, I'm happy, you know, yeah, I don't think about that relationship from two years ago, even though it broke my heart. Not that kind of happy, a real, true, fully happy person. It's the only way. All right, stay 
seven. Thanks for watching, guys.